Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Business Blonde on a rainy Thursday in May. We've come to bring you a bit of sunshine with some fabulous business chat, some coaching, and a fabulous guest in Sharon Gaffney. Thank you for tuning in and join in the chat box. We love it when you do that. So first of all, sorry about the background noise, don't know what the tech issues are. Let's go around the room and any any thoughts that have come up this week, any kind of vibes you're feeling in the business community or in yourself or in the stars? What's happening in your work? Kim? Yeah, it's been um it's been a great week actually. So so albeit a little bit of a strange one. So we've been getting ready for next week's International Coaching Week as part of the International Coaching Federation. So been planning all of that and I've uh, got some amazing guests but also had my little girl's very last um parents evening at nursery so her next one will be her get ready for school and I was like oh my goodness so how's that happened she's really ready I'm not sure I'm quite ready to give her up yet but um a real milestone which was fab mm, oh that's brilliant it is a milestone and the whole thing about motherhood I always found is letting go you give birth, you let go. You might breastfeed and then they go on to solid, yes. letting go. They start to walk, you're letting go of holding them. Yeah. They go with friends, they don't need mummy anymore. It's all about letting go. Yeah, yeah. It's sad but true. I'm sure you'll handle it beautifully as you always do, Kim. Um, thinking of you, Sam. Hello, and yes, what an interesting week. My week, actually yesterday, I had a, a great day um, facilitating a, a mastermind group. I'm sorry, the postman's just come with a delivery. Um, and what I found from that was really exciting because the shift has happened, it seems. The shift has gone now from real sort of fear and anxiety and almost a little bit of procrastination to huge amounts of growth mindset I saw um, amongst the, the peers yesterday. And that really excited me because, you know, we had some really sizable businesses yesterday talking about the potential growth, the, the opportunities out there. And actually everything was about really maximizing the opportunities and sales and revenue that is, is out there. So real positive week this week. That sounds great because I know a lot of people are still struggling. Um, this is how I'm seeing it is 50-50. Some people are saying, I am nervous about going out, but I do get a sense there's going to be an absolutely phenomenal economic upturn. <laughs> people want to get out there and shop and get to restaurants and have their lives again. And I just think there's a lot of positivity on the horizon. So thanks for sharing that, Sam. Penny, what are you picking up this week? How's, how are things in Penny's world? Well, it actually segues really nicely from what you've just been talking about because I love the events. I always love doing my monthly dinner events in London. And we just released our tickets um, to some of our clients for um, June. June, 20 tickets went in 10 minutes. Wow. And it, so, you know, it just shows that, and that's the capacity that I can get uh, in June, just shows everybody's desperate to so i think events are going to be so successful people that are running events and doing offline stuff i think there is a desire for the hybrid though because i think a lot of people are saying i don't you know i want to be at home i've got into that stride but just the intoxicating thought of getting on a train carrying a coffee looking out of a window arriving at a place feeling all nice and dressed up a bit and i just think everybody's excited about that i love it I like the intoxicating thought of a glass of wine in a warm place rather than freeze, freezing your knees off outside. <laughs> but um, I did a talk this week on resilience, a networking group, because it's, um, it's a national uh, mental health awareness week. And I'm uh, talking about resilience, how in the last year, really, we're all here, we have survived and we have all dug deep for resilience in our lives, in our businesses, in our personal lives, in our mental health. And, you know, it's just so surprising that none of us had a template for the last 12 months. And here we are. And we're doing OK. And as I say, some better than others. But the main thing is you're far more resilient than you think you are. And I think that's what came through in the talk. And afterwards, the discussion was, I am a bit nervous. I am still struggling. And other people can't wait to get out. So I think, you know, people will be catching up in their own personal ways, really, to get back out there. 
Um, but really, really delighted to welcome Sharon today. Um, I've known Sharon for many years, a lovely friend, and also a great business inspiration. Because every time I see Sharon, she's got something new and astonishing to say. She was bringing a, na a native indigenous, uh, I don't know what you call it, Indian? from the Amazon back to the UK to, to, to go to number 10 on, and lobby parliament about the Amazon rainforest. Then she's doing things in the arts and she's also um, very, very passionate about helping small businesses become environmentally friendly, sustainable and apply for the business grants that they need in order to do that. You've had 22 years of experience developing small businesses and you started out with one of our heroes Anita Roddick yeah. so, so Sharon tell us all about your journey how did you get from Anita Roddick to where you are now so I've always I, I ran my business when I was very young and uh, I didn't have anybody to help or support me and obviously that's that that's huge and when eventually I made mistakes along the way um, and I ran a few companies and then realized that I really loved them and was passionate about mentoring other other companies. And Anita Roddick was setting up the um, arm of uh, the Body Shop Direct. So I became a consultant to help her with the um, people that joined that to be able to be self-employed. So um, I was amazed at what she did and how she did it and how she was such a profitable company with high ethics and, you know, and she was an absolute inspiration for me. And I always remember one of the things that she ever said as well about women in business, because obviously that's why I was there and I was supporting them. And she said one thing, which was, you know, if a two-year-old, if a woman can negotiate between a two-year-old and a four-year-old who has the last toffee, she can actually negotiate any contract in the world. And I thought, you know, that is absolutely amazing. I just love that. And um, so she absolutely inspired me that you can run a business and you can be sustainable and ethical. And of course, I went out there to try and do this. And I kept hitting quite a lot of brick walls because I'm not an eat erotic, you know. And so I then went into helping start up businesses. And once they got to know me and understand me and trusted me, then I was able to go in with the sustainability. But of course, things have changed over time. And I've had, I've obviously, Anita was the, a huge influence in what I did. And then I joined an organization where I helped start up businesses. And we, en we ended up, you know, helping an, an enormous amount and I was fortunate to be on a carbon cutout program not a really good name for it I'm afraid carbon cutout but we helped 300 businesses become carbon sustainable and one of the key things I found was that businesses didn't understand what the word sustainable meant you know and it's so simple it's what you take out you put back that's it that is it and there's so many different ways that you can help yourself to be able to do that so i became um a little bit of a champion for sustainability i mean i've never gone to university for degrees on this this has all been a learning process as i've gone along and after i'd worked for this organization helping start up businesses um i decided no i want to be back on my own back at the grassroots really helping businesses the way i want to do it they really weren't interested in the sustainable side after this project had finished they just said you know well you know it's not it's not what we do we don't want to do it and i thought no this is where i want to actually take my journey and i was really fortunate i've been um volunteering for a theatre for seven years and they said Sharon if you're going out on your own will you give us two days a week please you know just just to help put us on the map and I thought you know what it's my passion I'm setting up this business perfect opportunity to be able to create the business for me you know rather than do what everybody else wants to do so I, I put four days odd um, in in creating this uh, startup side of things but then two days I gave to the theatre and um, they just gave me an absolute, like, they just said, just go for it. Whatever you want to do, help us put us on the map. So I thought, right, how can I bring in, you know, the sustainability side of things, all my business contacts and really get this, this, this lovely theatre on the map. So we started Watford Fringe Festival, which was brilliant. And, you know, we're only in our third year with that, but it's growing and growing. And I love that. But also I used to work with a guy called Phil Williams and um, he was an inspiration 
inspirational a speaker. He used to work with David Attenborough, who was a producer and a director. And he used to go around the country doing, um, you know, obviously filming all over the world, but he gave it up because he just saw what we were doing to the planet. So he gave everything up just to become a speaker and he used to go to schools and businesses he used to do the inspirational side because he used to go all over the world and tell all these fa amazing stories and I used to follow up with what the businesses or the schools could do and and we only worked occasionally together in a year but I just loved being with him and um I thought why don't we put on a play with some of his amazing stories you know that would be perfect because I can bring the business world in I can get sponsorship for it I can bring in Phil who's just got these amazing stories and I can help the theatre so uh Phil sort of came to me and said I'll write the script I went brilliant thinking that would be fantastic off he went and it wasn't very good bless him his stories are amazing but he's not a script writer so I pulled in a few people um, and we made it an educational place so we thought right okay we'll put this on and I, I, during our discussions with Phil I said obviously you've got this amazing footage you know which will really help um from the Amazon to be able to bring the bring the whole play to life so everything was going to be done on stage and there was going to be an interactive screen above with the foot live foot not live but footage from the Amazon but I, ha I haven't got any footage I said what We've been talking about this. We'd already sold tickets. We'd already got the rehearsals underway. And he said, no, he said, no. He said, I just go out there and I just want to do it. He said, somebody's going to have to go. So I thought, mm, all right, I'll go. You know, it's something that I've I, I've been advocate about protecting, you know, the rainforest. I thought, right, I'll do it. So I went out with my family because I thought it was too big for me to do on my own because I, I thought, what an experience. I want them to experience this as well. My daughter was a photographer. My son does film. So it's perfect. You know, we can we can all do it together. And we went out and lived with the Indigenous Indians for th nearly three weeks. Um, and it was amazing. It That changed my life absolutely without a shadow of doubt I've gone through life experiences highs and lows this changed my life forever when we got off the boat we came, we, we had to catch a large plane uh, a, a coach journey a motorized canoe for three hours a small plane and then we had a paddle canoe for another hour and a half and then a trek in the jungle for an hour and a half to get where we were we were in the middle of nowhere um, and I got off the boat and we saw the devastation that the oil industry was actually doing when we were there. And I, I just suddenly realized, yeah, we're doing the right thing here. We're, we're bringing something to people that's completely different to make them see it from a different perspective, not just from, um, you know, oh, I have to save plastic. I have to do this. There, there, there's a real human element to this. And when I got off the boat, I remember saying to Javier, who was our guide, he learned English in three years because he realized tourism was a good way to be able to fight the uh, oil industry. So that, that helps pay for the projects. And I got off the boat and I said, I am so sorry for what we are doing in the West to your home. And he said, it's not my home, it's your home. And I'm really pleased you've come to see it. And I, just that humbled me, you know, but living with these people, they just got a different, different in you know, attitude completely to life and it, they don't have time they don't have days of the week um it was just amazing so i came back with this absolutely stunning stunning um footage that went with the play and we put that on and we got the business world and community and everybody engaged with it and about 10 weeks before we were about to put the play on i went it's not going to work and the whole of my theatre production and everybody that was involved looked at me and said to me, Sharon, are you joking? What do you mean it's not going to work? It's just like watching a documentary. You don't get the passion. I saw from Javier, he just, he made me cry nearly every day with what he could do. So I said, you know, don't get it. So um, we, he's, they said, well, what do you think we should do? I said, he needs to be here. He needs to be on stage. He needs to be the one that actually tells people what is happening for them to understand that we all need to make small changes. Um, so we went to some corporate sponsorship and um, we raised the money to be able to bring him over. So um, we had Javier. So that was the other huge life experience for me was, and for the young people to have him come out on stage. And we kept the play exactly the same, but right at the very end, one person broke the uh, third wall and said, no, hang on, we shouldn't be talking to this person on screen, we should be talking uh, to him. And he just walks out because he's their face on the screen and he came out, so it really worked. And I was very fortunate, I got businesses involved. So we went and took Javier around to businesses 
practices. We took him to number 10, as Carol was saying. Um, we took him to schools, but we also took him to uh, Warner Brothers because we have Warner Brothers on our doorstep. And I'm very fortunate. I worked with Dan Dark, the CEO. And he said, Sharon, you must, you must bring Javier to, to Warner Brothers. So I said, mm, okay. So we went to Warner Brothers and oh, he just he just went, they loved it. He went on tour and everything. And um, but it was the business community that surprisingly saw how things differently when they heard his pers perspective. Now, I can't bring Javier with me everywhere I go when I talk to businesses, but I can talk about some of the things that we've learned. So he was a real huge, massive influence. And that was the turning point where I thought, no, this has got to be my focus. This is something that I know and I understand. And I have to change my attitude of, of not thinking that um, it becomes secondary to starting up a business. It actually should be ingrained from when you start up that business. So a huge influence is I've been, as I say, very fortunate along the way. So um, yeah, that's, that, that's why I become such a champion. Really, for, for Karen, no, I, I think all our hair has been blown back by your story. <laughs> <laughs> it's astonishing. I was, um, uh, it, I just loved it. I loved every minute of him being here, and it was really weird because people used to stop and stare because he's 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 got the long hair, he's got the features, etc., and he wore his tribal makeup, etc., around where, wherever we went. It, people just flocked to him. It was amazing. So, uh, yeah, and he's a firm friend now as well. And and he started a, a tourism business, so I've started him in business as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, which is which is amazing. But uh, yeah, but that's that's given me the impetus to be able to absolutely go to businesses and say look you know we've got to be doing something we can't just uh, be doing nothing really at the end of the day and there's simple steps that businesses can take so yeah it's been good showing your um your your passion for this just absolutely overflows like when when you speak and you your smile and your face just comes alive when you talk about him and the work that you've done together it's extraordinary and thanks for sharing that with us that's Everyone fine. knows that my world is in the SME business side of things. And you obviously help startups, you help women in business be sustainable. That That's your thing. But what I come across, um, the objections in SME is that obviously the affordability. So how can I balance affordability, profit and sustainability? What would you say to those thinking that way? Uh, well, absolutely. What, the one thing is don't try to do it all. That you definitely don't. You take one step at a time. And so one of the things I do with the business is I actually go in and audit their organization. So we, we break it down into chunks. So you look at transport, you look at uh, energy supplies, you look at um, travel, you look at waste, you look at all sorts of different sections. And um, there will always be something that the business is hiring. For instance, for me, I do coaching, et cetera. So mine is mileage, you know, when, I, when I'm going around the country. So I then focus on the largest thing that, that has the biggest impact within the environment. And it doesn't have to be onerous. So there are things that businesses can do. For instance, somebody said to me recently, I'm, I'm all for carbon um, setting off carbon as well, where you pay an organization to set off carbon. And people say, isn't that lazy? And I say, no, actually, none of a business actually can't get into the psyche that this is you know, the pro a priority. There, there is a very easy way. You work out your carbon footprint and you can actually then have that set off. Obviously, I'd like them to reduce their carbon footprint as well at the same time. But there is organizations that do that. And what happens is, is they massively benefit. So, for instance, I pay for an organization that, that plants trees all over the world and it's called 8 billion trees. So I know what I'm doing. I've changed my search engine to Ecosia. Simple things. So um, for every 45 search engines you do, they plant a tree for you. You know, so there's things that you can do very simply or you can do it in quite a lot of detail. So once you've audited and had a look at, 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 at what um, is causing the biggest impact, we work on that. And a lot of times there's so many grants out there. At the moment, there are huge amounts of grants, and I took a, down a couple because they change consistently. So you've got the Greg's Foundation Fund, which is, you know, some of them, 68 million pounds. And, and there's also ERDF funding still available at the moment, European funding. And, um, you know, vehicles, the, the, the 
the actual benefits for getting electric cars at the moment are huge, especially if you're a, a single comp company owner. And the other big influence for me, so you're saying, Sam, you work with SMEs. Um, I, in Hertfordshire, and um, there's 63,000, nearly 64,000 businesses, and 92% of them are SMEs, and most of those are naught to nines. So I've got this, this ethos, is if every single one of us did one thing, a little thing, and you think about it, that 90% of businesses all did that one or two things, it's going to make a huge difference. So what I, what I do say to businesses, don't panic. You don't think you've got to do it all it's going to cost you a fortune there are, as long as you measure it and that's what's really important and i get huge passion out of helping a company then write their company report so on the back pages they're telling them how many trees they've saved you know mm -hmm. a, a ream of paper is a sixth of a tree mm -hmm. easy to measure you save 20 reams of paper you know how many trees you've saved so and people get a lot more staff get more engaged with that side of things especially if they've been there right from the start. So it's a real journey. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I think you made a really good point there because I think SMEs think that, you know, we're, we're, we're so little, you know, our small input is not going to have an impact. Whereas, like you said, if every single person does just something little, it's going to have mm. a huge impact. And, and also, um, what's really fascinating me at the moment is how how the younger generation how the millennials the gen the gen z's they all feel so passionate about this and seeing that on the back of the company report every quarter will really motivate them to do more so i think that's a really valid point yeah absolutely and and from the project that we did with the theater i had 25 young people that were involved in that and I cannot tell you what champions they are now from after meeting. Having, so, so you're right, it's that generation, which is where I always, always, always have open doors for schools as well, because I think it's about giving them and empowering them at an early stage. So I don't just deal with the businesses. I, I really do support schools to be able to do this too, um, to be able to educate right from the word go. You know how how but you're right they they're all way ahead of us as well in some ways because it's been ingrained in them and that's why for startup businesses i think it needs to be right from the word go and ethics as well you know ethical businesses and the other thing is is i find that once a company starts down that route as long as they publicize it i'm i'm absolutely an advocate publicize what you're doing you know do shout about it um, you'll find you'll get different customer base as well because there are people that gravitate towards business that are now more ethical and sustainable. So, yeah. I love that. And your, your passion, as Sam said, is like it overspills, doesn't it, in the impact that we can have. And actually even the smallest thing can make such a big difference. And I love that you're also doing it in, in the education piece. I do quite a bit with like some local school academies. And I think the more we can do in that space to – help people have it as part of their DNA. And I guess that's what you're saying, isn't it? It's about making it the DNA of your business, part of your ethics, your values, your purpose. Um, and that will help you define who you are, why you are, and get your clients, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and you know, right, going back to your point initially about that the businesses can be profitable and sustainable or ethical at the same time. They really can. Um, it's just a different mindset um, and being able to support that. And I remember Javier one day when, when obviously we'd taken him to the House of Parliament, we'd gone all over the place, he'd been to Warner Brothers. And of course, he didn't understand why we had so many shoes. That was the first thing he said. He looked at me, why do you have so many shoes? They just cover your feet. I thought, no, we're going to have to educate you on that one. Um, but uh, he said, you never strive for anything less. He said, I've noticed that all you ever want is more and more. And I realized, actually, that's the way we've been brought up, isn't it? And when I go back to that, sustainable means you 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 put back what you take. Then obviously you can take as long as you put back more. You know, so it's about just us all becoming very re-educated. And I'm thank goodness for my job has always been quite hard I have found it quite tough until David Attenborough did the plastic um, um, program and it's just opened the floodgates now for people to have that different mindset so which I'm very grateful for so yeah mm. <laughs> 
Carol's on mute. Sorry, I was going to say, Penny, I, I thought you wanted to say something. Yeah, I'm really curious about this subject because, um, well, I'm glad you mentioned the offsetting because at some, in some ways that can be lazy, can't it? And um, yes. I know I've got a client who writes reports on, on carbon reporting because there's 12,000 companies in the UK now that have to, if they're over a certain size, aren't they? And over, yeah. It's called the ESOS. Is it ESOS? ESOS yeah, now? Something like yeah. that. And it's um, really, really important. But I, I was, so I've been looking, thinking about myself and actually Thomas and I are due to change our car. And now we've heard that the, the government, not only are they giving grants, but also you can put your car through your company. Yeah. Um, if it's hybrid. And yep. and there's a very minimal amount of benefit in kind now to try and encourage business owners and directors to do that, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, last year it was free. There was no benefit in kind at all, but yeah. this year it's like five hundred pounds, which is negligible for a year. Um, I mean, exactly. And there's an ERDF grant. If you can prove that it's going to be able to save your your, you can also get a further five thousand pounds towards that vehicle. So mm. um, yeah, it's 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 really worth it. It's, it's just really navigating. Right. It's like everything, isn't it? You, you, someone like you will highlight to people watching this, and then it's navigating. How do you get the knowledge? So, how do you work as an expert? How do you provide your knowledge? I, I do sign up to every grant finder that's going, so that I know exactly where I can actually um, be able to insert. No, but how do you give it to others? How does somebody become a client of yours? How do you impart oh. the knowledge? Well, so obviously I've got my company, Verdi Business Solutions, so they, they can come to me directly. Um, I've been, I've helped start two and a half thousand businesses, so I get an awful lot of recommendations and people come have come to me throughout the years. It's And I run Sapphire Business Club as well. So there's lots of ways yeah, people no, understand. I'm not really how, you get the, the, how do you generate leads? I mean, how does somebody, do, do you coach them? Is it a one-off process oh, with to learn? Sorry, it? Penny. No, that's all right. It's obviously one of those days. I should have had more um, wine. I mean, it's very um, yeah. interesting to know about the other stuff, but I'm trying to channel it down to that. I'm yeah, really ab hard. absolutely. So the first of all, we have a discussion over the phone of exactly where they want to go with this, because it's about um, how far do they want to go. So it's really important for me to understand their business goals with their sustainability and how invested they are. Is it something they want to do very simply or is it something they want to do, back, uh, you know, and then I'll come around and do an audit. So I will come and audit their company and um, we, we go through the whole whole um, sections and look at the company as a whole and see what they need. Sometimes it's just waste that they want to do or it's a travel plan or all sorts of things. And then I have a look to see whether there's any grants available to be able to support them there. But because I've been a business advisor for quite some time, it's quite often when I go into a company, I can also help them with their business growth. You know, I see an avenue uh, that I'll say, actually, I know this isn't anything to do with sustainability but if you you know perhaps have a look at this sort of market etc so it's it's quite a learning process and it evolves as well so mm. after the audit they decide how much or how little they actually want to um, invest in to be able to support their businesses but I also insist that they measure whatever they do and I, I'll help them with that as well because that's the most important thing is measuring what you do Shannon, uh, so we could listen to you all day and it's the time unfortunately is always our enemy. I wonder if you could just give us one tip that all of us, anyone on the call today could do to be a little bit greener in our business. Yeah, just, um, well, Ecosia is a perfect example of changing your search engine. That's so simple. It takes two seconds and it benefits hugely. You know, it really does. So that's that's one simple tip. And join Grant Finder as well because then then tons of grant grants will come into your inbox and you know whether it suits you or not that's two tips. perfect thank you so much for that sharon just quick go go around the room has anyone else got a tip for our our viewers today penny have you got a tip a takeaway tip well, i will and I, if you go to your iphone and you go to your settings right there is something called screen time and they have got this downtime and app limiting. And I've added this now uh, because I discovered that all our dopamine and stimulation we're getting through the day is you really need to calm down to let your melatonin come in. So I now turn every, all of my apps off um, and they automatically happen on my phone from seven o'clock in the evening, which, you know, if I want to work, I'll come and do it at my desk. But other, you know, other than that, um, I am I'm now. So I would say have a look at that on your apps 
try and uh, increase your melatonin so you rest well at night. Thank you, Penny. That's a great tip. Sam? I think I'm just going to follow on from what Sharon was saying. I loved, you know, that it's okay to take as long as we put more back. So not just to put something back, but put more back. And I think that that's a really great message. So I'm going to follow on from that. Thank you, Sharon. And I'm mad on pot plants, and I think they do help our well-being. I can't move in my house. It's a jungle in here, not out there. So buy pot plants, not just because they're trendy at the moment, but add something to your office that's a bit green. It makes you appreciate life and all green issues really i think it brings a little bit of that sensibility into your home and it's good for well-being and now that, and thanks again sharon for being a great host i'm gonna leave it to kim for a tip and to finish off thank you kim that's it um, sharon could literally listen to you all day um i think you're right i think it's, it's all of us taking the chance to do the one thing that we can do whatever that is no matter how small, let's make sure we take that stance. And if you would like to join us and be in Sharon's chair, then please do get in touch with us at www.businessblondes.tv. And until then, um, enjoy the lovely weather, if you're having any lovely weather, and enjoy the rain. If, like me, you've got our rain for the joy of May. Um, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.